obviously 2020 has been a bit of a disaster and quite frankly i think all of us are just a little bit uh, worn out about everything that's been going on in the world uh so i decided that in my continuous effort to try and figure out new ways of entertaining you guys that i would start trying to do something a little different uh i've i've been playing video games for a while now and obviously if you guys follow my other channel arcapa studios i have done music videos in the past and i hope to be able to find some sort of muse and inspiration to get back into that but one thing that has been keeping me sane throughout this entire pandemic has been um youtubers that go on the record and just like talk about stories or theories or ideas um that they regularly encounter or think of and and they share it with the world uh and i've always wanted to do something like that but i've never really had the confidence or courage to be able to take it up and and try it but over the course of 2020 i've discovered three youtubers in particular that have really inspired me to try so this is going to be the inaugural video for a new series. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to call it. Right now, it's just tentatively named Alpha Talks. But uh, I've thrown around a couple of ideas uh, for, like, um, the unpopular opinion or stuff like that. But I, I haven't quite figured out exactly what I want to call it. But I just want to say a thank you. I doubt that they'll ever see this. But I just want to say a thank you to uh, Emirichu, uh, Jaden Animations, and Maseko X. Or Mas I think that's how you pronounce it um um for their continuous dedication to providing entertaining and uh interesting commentary on a variety of different topics while i would like to be able to do something like what jaden and emirichu do which they're both animators and so they do their own artwork and animate their own videos obviously i'm not an animator so i'm going to do my best to use my video editing skills to try and give you a, a, an entertaining experience that hopefully will give you guys, you know, a little bit of a break and and maybe a little bit of a laugh. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, the links in the description below for all three of those channels, strongly recommend you check them out because they are very entertaining. Um, Jaden, in particular, is the reason why I have decided to try, try the topic for this particular video. Um, and so, yeah, uh, she does a lot of Pokemon stuff and that's what the topic of this is. If you've seen the title, so, uh, let's get into it. So among the Pokemon community, there seems to be a bit of a disinterest in certain games in the franchise. Not every game is going to be tailored for every audience and every single individual game has their own quirks, strengths, and weaknesses that various uh, players have to get over. Two of my favorite games in the series end up actually being some of the ones that seem to have, I won't say displeased, but definitely disinterested a lot of the, uh, the fandom. And that's kind of disappointing because I've had some of my best moments, obviously, since I'm making a video about it. Um, and that game happens to be Pokemon X alongside its sister companion, Pokemon, or its sister game, Pokemon Y. Pokemon X is one of those games that it didn't have a lot going for it, you know? And while it is one of my personal favorite games in the Pokemon series, it's purely because of the way I decided to play it. Uh, if I had played it any other way, it may not have turned out to be one of my favorites. Um, it's not my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite and in my personal opinion, the best the series has ever been it has been Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I will die on that hill. But the Pokemon X and Y games weren't necessarily bad. They just didn't have a lot of content for them, which sort of made sense since they were the first handheld games to make the jump into uh, 3D. That means I'm sure that a lot of the content that they wanted to put into the game couldn't be fit in there because the three-dimensional graphics probably took up a lot more... In fact, they didn't probably. They did fully take up more space than any of the other Pokemon games before it. So it makes sense that it's not going to have nearly as much content because you sacrifice content for graphics. But uh, despite its failings, 
I have to say Pokemon X still goes down as one of the most memorable experiences in the Pokemon franchise that I've ever had. It's definitely not anywhere close to where the games have become now, but in terms of what it was, I have to say it brought me some of the most enjoyable experiences that I have ever had. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably typing in the comments below, or want to at the very least, saying, well, why Pokemon X? Why do you not go with Pokemon Y? I bet you wanted to capitalize on the fact that uh, Xerneas was a fairy type, and at that time, nobody knew how to counter fairy types. And tactically speaking, that would be very, very accurate, except for the fact that it wasn't. Yveltal, I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, the Pokemon Y Legendary is definitely far more up my alley in terms of Pokemon. I like my, f I like my, uh, my legendaries flying, okay? Uh, Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres, Lugia, those are the staples for the Pokemon series legendaries for me, and I, um, yeah, I would prefer to actually have a, a flying legendary. I just get more versatility out of them. So, Xerneas, yeah. He is incredibly powerful. In fact, he was one of the most OP legendaries at the time, I believe. Um, just because of the fact that as a fairy type, there weren't very many things that could actually compete, uh, compete with him. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the reason. Like I said, Yveltal is normally the type of legendary I would have gone for. And ironically enough, I never ended up getting Yveltal. But... The reason why I chose Pokemon X over Y was because of one reason and one reason only. Anyone who knows me knows that Mewtwo is my all-time favorite Pokemon. Perfection. And it's not just because of the fact that he is a super badass. It's not a matter of the fact that he is the str arguably the strongest legendary in the game, nor is it the fact that he has... Uh, one of the coolest designs in the game. What makes him my favorite is actually from Pokemon the first movie. His mindset and his character development is the reason why I view Mewtwo as my favorite Pokemon. Until Pokemon the first movie, uh, I believe my favorite Pokemon was actually Ivysaur. And that spawns from the fact that the very first Pokemon I ever chose in any Pokemon game was Bulbasaur. Um, I'm a grass type trainer primarily. Uh, I prefer grass-type starters, and that's just the way it always has been. There's probably going to be a lot of people like, why didn't you choose Charizard? Because, frankly, I didn't like Charizard. I like him now, but back when I was, like, you know, 10 years old, Charizard was not my cup of tea. So, yeah, that's that's the reason why I chose Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur looked more dinosaurish-like to me, and I like dinosaurs. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so Mewtwo became my favorite Pokemon after Pokemon the first movie, and he's maintained that status to this day. So Mega Mewtwo was a very, very, very important thing for me. Uh, honestly, it came, I, I, the, I know that a lot of people are going to immediately link the fact that I chose Mega Mewtwo X over Y. And then there are going to be a lot of people who will be like, but Mega Mewtwo Y is a stronger evolution. It has superior stats. It's the strongest psychic type Pokemon in the game. It can do so much damage. It's so fast. I'm like, that, none of that matters to me. Mega Mewtwo X looks like a Super Saiyan Mewtwo. And I actually have a story about that where I managed to transmute Mewtwo using Dragon Ball Z logic basically creating him like Cell was created, and put him into Dragon Ball Z. And if you guys want to hear about that, I will be more than happy to tell you about it. It is a very, very fun video, and I I personally would love to make it, because I had a lot of fun with that. But that's getting a little off topic. That's the entire reason why I chose Pokemon X over Y was because of Mega Mewtwo. So, now that you know why I chose X over Y, and the reason... For it being just basically because of the fact that Mewtwo X looks like, in my opinion, better. Um, I will get into exactly what I went through with this playthrough. One of the biggest things that I remember about Pokemon X was Greninja. And Greninja, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, Hey, but I thought you chose starter types that are grass. I'm like, I do, normally. But I had a plan. 
I already had another starter that was grass type that I was going to use, and that was Sceptile. So I didn't need to choose a grass starter because I had a different grass starter that someone was going to give me. Uh, and they did end up giving it to me, and it was awesome. And I think it was a shiny um, because they bred it. So, you know, that was cool. But Greninja was the starter that I chose for this, mostly because of the fact that I wanted a dark type on my team. Little did I know, I was actually going to end up with two dark types on my team. But I wanted to be able to, you know, I've never had a dark type on my team, really. I've had Pokemon with dark type moves, but I've never had an actual dark type. And Greninja gave me that opportunity to actually experiment with dark type Pokemon. Um, the e by the end of the game, I had a team that composed of the following Pokemon that are appearing on the right side of my screen. Bruh. Or left side. That's the left side. Right side on my camera. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, the, these Pokemon stuck with me for pretty much the entirety of the game. You'll notice that there are some very interesting choices there. Especially Beedrill. There's a reason for Beedrill. Um, as most of you probably have guessed, Beedrill was my anti-fairy type Pokemon on my team. Uh, poison types were remarkably effective against fairy types, and I knew I was going to need something to be able to counter the fairies, and that was the only thing I could think of right off the top of my head. So as soon as I got a, a Weedle, I basically just trained it up into Beedrill. And Beedrill, I've never given any kind of like secondary thought to Beedrill. Beedrill was always one of those Pokemon that you, eh, you'd throw it away. You just, uh, okay, so I've evolved Kakuna to Beedrill. Now what? Believe it or not, though, Beedrill ended up being the MVP of my team. This Pokemon was by far the greatest asset that I had on this team. Not just because of the fairies, but just because he became so fast and extremely powerful with his poison attacks that he was capable of doing some significant damage. It was almost stupid how amazing this Pokemon was in Pokemon X. Uh, I don't know if it was if he's continued to be amazing since fairies have continued on, but at least right at that moment where fairies were popping out of the woodwork and becoming one of the most dominating and dangerous things that you could ever encounter, uh, Beedrill <coughs> just wrecked them. Annihilated them. I, I had plans on replacing him with Nidoking because uh, Nidoking was one of the final Pokemon I had in Pokemon Red. And Nidoking was one of my favorites because of the fact that not only was he an incredibly powerful ground and poison type, but more importantly than that, he, at least in Pokemon Red, I was able to teach him Thunder Punch and Surf, which completely threw off all of my friends in Pokemon Red because they're expecting something not like that coming from Nidoking. And it was so much fun watching them just be like, the hell? Where did that come from? So I, that was my intention for Pokemon X, was to use Beedrill for a while and then replace him with Nidoking. But by the end of the game, I found that, that Beedrill was one of my favorite Pokemon to use. His speed was absolutely insane. I couldn't tell you what his speed actually ended up being. But... For someone who was just trying to make him as fast as possible without worrying about EVs uh, or IVs or anything like that, Beedrill ended up outperforming almost every single Pokemon that I ever went against, except for Pokemon that were using naturally faster attacking moves. Um, his strength was also incredibly good. This is a Pokemon that I did not take seriously and wound up really enjoying. He was... So much fun. He was a glass cannon. His defense was terrible. But in terms of his overall speed and his strength, he was capable of blitzing through opponents like you wouldn't believe. Uh, anyone who's played Pokemon X and Y, however, probably will notice that there is a serious flaw on my team. And it's a flaw that I did not anticipate. It's a flaw that I had no intention of actually having exploited against me. Obviously. I mean, nobody wants a flaw that could be exploited against you. But this particular one was one that I had not anticipated. Because, stupid me, I jumped into Pokemon X completely blind and didn't do any research. 
besides the fact I knew it was the first time the fairies and Mega Evolution had appeared, it kind of blindsided me. Not gonna lie. And that stupid little individual who completely wrecked my team five out of six times because he could, he could one shot five out of the six Pokemon on my team, six out of six if it was if I had replaced Charizard with Sceptile, was this thing. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 This stupid little luchador bird was capable of destroying every Pokemon that I used in my main lineup up until I got Mewtwo and and Cernius. I still have nightmares of Halucha. This stupid beast, this abomination had a move called Flying Press. For those who aren't familiar with Halucha or Flying Press, I envy you. I genuinely envy you because Flying Press at the time, I don't know if they've done anything with it since, but at the time, Flying Press was the only move that counted as both a, a, a two different types. It counted as two different types. It counted as both a flying type and a fighting type move. Note, Halucha is a flying and fighting type Pokemon, meaning that he gets double advantage for using this move twice Air assassination you see the displeasure on my face as you can imagine i actually had to come up with different counters for this um i had ice punch and fire punch or no not fire punch a uh, thunder punch on hitmonchan and i had ice beam on uh, on on greninja all of this was just to counter this one Pokemon because I could breeze through the entire game. 100% the entire game. If Helucha had not been there, nothing would have stopped me. This thing needs to die in a fire. And it did many times. Charizard burned him so many times. It was just, it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I can't. I can't, I can't even, I can't even. But besides Halucha, who is probably the most bad memorable thing in Pokemon X and Y, I have to say that the majority of the game actually ended up being fairly pleasurable. Uh, I remember specifically that we were going through the Elite Four and up until that point, this was the first time I had actually fought the Elite Four in Pokemon X and Y. Most of my Pokemon were between levels 64 and 64, I believe, 65, something like that. And it, we managed to breeze through pretty much everything. I mean, we took some damage, but I was I had super potions. I was able to, to fix that relatively quickly. Um, but then we encountered the the final boss, the Pokemon champion, who, as I'm sure you Pokemon X and Y fans know, has a Gardevoir, and she is one of the few Pokemon in the game that will Mega Evolve. Mega Gardevoir was level 68. Because Gardevoir is a Psychic type and a Fairy type, that means that, theoretically speaking, Beedrill would be the best option to put against Mega Gardevoir, because Psychic types are weak to Bug types, Fairy types are weak to Poison. But, at the same time, Psychic type moves are super effective against poison types. So you start getting into some very confusing mathematical qu uh, quandaries there with uh, the poison type and the bug type possibly canceling each other out when it comes to a psychic type move. Um, Mega Gardevoir pretty much evolved almost immediately. And that's when I realized I was eight levels under leveled. Poor Beedrill was only level 60. Fighting a level 68 Mega Evolution. And I have to admit, I was kind of sweating there. Absol had been knocked out. 
um, who would have been my go-to secondary counter. Greninja was low on health, and I didn't have any uh, any more potions for him. Um, most of the other Pokemon would have just been able to chip away at him, but that was basically it. Um, I didn't have Dual Blade at that time. Uh, Sceptile was in his place, so I was kind of SOL when it came to trying to use a Ghost-type move. Um, so it came down to Beedrill. Beedrill had to do the majority of the damage. And he did. You see, Beedrill, unbeknownst to me, apparently was strong enough to one-shot Mega Gardevoir that was eight levels higher than it with Poison Jab. Poison Jab. It, I sent Beedrill out expecting him to die. And instead, he more or less massacred the Mega Gardevoir. He was the murder hornet of my team. And I will never, ever forget that Pokemon. Like I said before, it was one of the most memorable experiences that I've ever had in a Pokemon game. I... Don't know if they'll ever make a Pokemon game that provides me with such a unique experience. I certainly hope so. I always go into a Pokemon game expecting something interesting to happen. But in terms of like team composition, I think that was probably my favorite team that I've ever put together. Anyway, if you like this format of video, please let me know in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to hear some feedback about what sort of things you'd like to hear me talk about. From fan theories to uh, opinions to other stories. Uh, like I said, I've got a, an entire Dragon Ball Z Mewtwo story that I would love to share with you guys, but I need to know whether or not you want to hear it. So, uh, yeah, let me know. I would love to hear your opinion, and thank you for joining me on this little bit of a roller coaster inaugural sort of, I don't know, Alpha Talks video. <laughs> uh, yeah. Without further ado, I guess I will let you get on with the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me. This was Archive 12, and I shall see you in the next video.